So before I start the vlog, I have a special announcement for all of you guys out there. We have a great partnership with MinervaBeauty.com. That partnership got even better. So now we have a special offer for you guys. So if you go to MinervaBeauty.com FSE, you're looking for salon furniture, salon tools, anything like that, you can go check out MinervaBeauty.com slash FSE. Also, if you're in the market for a new hair salon, you like the haircuts that you see on any of our videos, go to HairSalonLocator.com. That is our brand new website made by us where you can find all the FSE partner member salons in the country, in the world. We have over 100 salons now in the US and we're starting to expand to other countries as well. So go check out HairSalonLocator.com. All right, let's get started with the vlog. Here we go. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. What's up guys, welcome to today's vlog. Today I'm gonna do a longer layered haircut for you guys. We're gonna call it the three layer haircut, but really we all know there is no such thing as a three layer haircut. But what makes this one unique is that I did it in a few different sections. We also did a really cool twist technique throughout the top. I think you guys are gonna find this technique unique and fun to do in the salon. Here is our end result. You can see how the bang kind of kicks over. It feathers back into the cut. You can see all of the different layers throughout the haircut. But like I said, we did it in just a few sections. It's not a complicated cut. So I know that you guys are gonna like it. Let's get started with our step-by-step. -step. Here we go. All right guys, so I wanted to start off by showing you what the mannequin looked like prior. Um, I think a lot of times I just start with it wet and you don't get to see uh, the beginning and how the layers are falling before I cut it. Then I, I went in with the Cloud9 Blowout Serum. This is from Bricado. And I, I think a key step that a lot of people miss when they're either styling their hair or prepping the hair for a haircut is putting the product in prior to brushing the hair. So just run the product through, brush the product through after that. What that's gonna do is saturate all the product on the hair and get a more even consistency. I think uh, where a lot of people fail with the product is when you don't get it on every bit of the hair, then you lose the benefits of the product. Then I went parietal ridge all the way around horseshoe section uh, from each corner, right at the corner of the eyebrow, around. Then I went to, uh, I took a picture to post on Instagram. If you guys want to check that out, go to at Free Salon Education on Instagram. You can see kind of a behind the scenes picture of the setup that I used to film as well. Uh, now what I did was I split the head in half. So I go right at that division point and I braid the hair forward. The reason I use a braid and not clip it away is just for, you know, it, it looks better, it looks cooler to me. Um, and also, it just keeps the hair nice and tight and away from the head shape. You could clip it as well, but if you don't have as many clips or you wanna just do it this way, then go ahead. It's really not a big purpose uh, behind it. So now to take our next parting is gonna be straight down center back. Uh, I'm gonna comb that nice uh, in a way, and then I'm gonna work across the occipital bone down to behind the ear. That will separate a nice little square section behind the ear and right uh, on the low crown area. And that's basically what I'm doing is I'm separating the nape of the neck up to the occipital bone and then the occipital bone up to the low crown and then low crown uh, up to high crown and, and so on and so forth. That's, that's the round of the head. So I'm sectioning each flat plane off so that I know that every section I'm holding, I know exactly the angles that I'm holding it at. So there is our sectioning. So what I'm gonna do is I'm sitting on my uh, Minerva Beauty cutting stool. And the thing I love about this, especially with longer hair, is it allows me to get nice and low on the section, but keep everything nice and even so you're not uh, in that kind of uncomfortable squatting position when you're cutting hair. So uh, this is definitely something that I use quite a bit. It was something that I wasn't a fan of prior to having one. And then once I got a cutting stool, I, there's not a day I don't use it in the salon. So now what I'm gonna do is some condensed cutting. I love using condensed cutting, but you have to use it uh, smart. And the way that I'm using it smart in this uh, instance is I'm using it just on that occipital bone to low crown area so all of that is on the same pretty much the same plane so when i over direct it up and i condense the entire section together i get a nice layered effect and i'm cutting all that hair at once so instead of taking a bunch of vertical sections throughout it and maybe losing a little bit of that consistency condensed cutting keeps you very consistent but knowing that i'm 
uh, kind of pinching all of this hair together and cutting it, it's definitely collapsing that shape in the back, creating a lot of layering. So you want to make sure that the density is right in the cut. If they have a, a finer fabric of hair, I would probably lower my elevation a little bit so that I didn't remove so much weight from the ends. But you can see the layering it falls really nice. Uh, it's such a cool technique. And the other little thing that I did was I tilt the head way forward because I'm standing in front of them when I cut that section. So now just matching up the sides. The sides is where you lose a little bit of density. So you definitely know there's more hair in the back of the head than there is in the front. So because I lose that density, I'm not going to layer the sides. I'm going to leave that as a disconnection. You can always decide to do something different with it later, but I wanted to leave it as a disconnection for now. And I just go through and do a blunt cut and keep that density in the sides. Now we're going to take down the top. And this is where we uh, move into the three layer haircut or the three section haircut in the top. Uh, this is the most important sections of the cut. It's what makes the cut unique. So I want to show you guys exactly how we do it. I'm taking a nice horizontal, we can call it horizontal section across the top. Uh, and then I grab the hair in my hand and I twist it. And what that twist is going to do is over direct each side of the hair. So it's going to give me a nice little beveled effect. You can see different artists do this. You, Sam Villa's done this. Uh, Robert Cromines does it. I, I just think it's a cool way. But the actual technique that we're doing on top, I'm going to change it up a little bit. So I've seen people cut it in the bang. But what I want to do is cut it throughout the entire top of the haircut. So you're going to see that my elevation is going to shift. I take a little bit of my old hair that I cut as a guide. And then I take some new hair. And because I'm moving further back on the head, I raise my elevation. What that's going to do is soften uh, the, the harshness of how it's going to fall. If I overdirected everything just straight forward and kept it low, it would be way too heavy. So I keep shifting my elevation, but I take everything in my hand and I do that flip twist uh, when I see my guide. And then I give it a cut and that's going to give me a nice beveled edge throughout the entire haircut. Now you'll see those layers come to life. You can see the disconnections on the side, keeping the nice heaviness uh, where the density is lower. And you can see it's, it flows really nice. It looks like everything's kind of disconnected, but once the haircut falls, it connects itself all together. What I'm going to do is smooth out the mannequin now. I want to show you guys the smooth shape. So obviously if I curl it up, it's going to look great. But I want to show you guys what it looks like straight as well. And with the bangs uh, brushed forward because... It's actually a pretty cool look on both uh, spectrums, if it's curly or if it's straight. So what I'm doing is a flat wrapping technique. That flat wrapping technique is going to help me uh, kind of work with the shape of the head. It's also going to show me where heaviness happens. So a lot of people uh, ask me why I would straighten hair without just actually doing the finish or a round brush or anything like that. I like to smooth the hair out, which allows me to see any of the weight and heaviness within the haircut. If you start to curl it up, it's harder to see that weight. So flat wrapping technique, back and forth, back and forth. The, the other big thing, and we're going to use the Joyco. This is like a thermal protectant spray that they just sent me. Really enjoying this product. It's nice and light. But anytime I'm doing some blow drying, so now I'm midway through the blow dry, I spray a little bit of that thermal protectant in as the hair starts to dry. And then I go back through and I continue my flat wrapping and I work through the ends a little bit. The flat wrapping is really important because it doesn't allow flatness on the top of the head. A lot of people put the part in the in the in their guest. They blow dry the guest with the part and they, they never take that part away and it ends up flat. You want to work the hair back and forth on top of the head, wrap it around the head, uh, back the other way. And what that's going to do is give you a little bit of that volume and flexibility within the hair. Now we've got our vibrostrate iron. Notice because of the flat wrapping, because of the focus on the scalp to mid shaft, all I have to do when I go in with my flat iron is use mid shaft to ends to smooth it out. So you're using less damage on the hair because I'm not having to pass over the hair over and over and over with the flat iron. So we'll finish it up. You can see the polish. You can see how the layers, they're really laying very seamless. And the reason for that is because we're so focused on elevation. When you're focused on elevation, you don't have to worry about those heavy lines being built up. Now we got our Mizutani Puffins. Uh, I cut the very beginning part of the haircut with my DB20 scissor from Mizutani, my favorite precision cutting scissor. And now I'm going in with the Puffin, which is a dry cutting scissor. The reason I use a dry cutting scissor is because dry cutting is hard on your scissors. When you have an expensive scissor, you don't want to necessarily 
be cutting dry hair. It will dull it faster. The dry cutting scissor is made for dry hair. It's smooth. It goes through the hair really soft and also has a thick blade on it. So it has a lot more power for dry cutting. Notice that long hair sticking out there and how I kind of peel it away. That's my disconnection. And a lot of people would just go in, cut that off, but you don't want to cut off your disconnections because you put disconnection in there with a purpose. So I just soften it with some point cutting uh, all the way through the top, taking the same sections. And I do a little bit in the back just to soften uh, that as well. But you can see that nice line throughout it. And that is the cut with it smooth and just down. Now what I'm gonna do is blow dry it back. So I'm gonna use the heat from the blow dryer to create my style and pop up the front of the fringe. Because obviously she's not gonna wear those long bangs in her face. So I'll use my hand with my blow dryer, lifting the hair up. You can see how easily those uh, layers fall backwards. The reason they fall backwards so well is because we cut them forward. So. Uh, naturally, once you cut those layers forward, they're going to want to fly back. Same thing using the thermal protectant spray just to do a little bit of finishing. And I love this look. I think it's definitely a current look. Uh, I think people are, you're starting to see those bangs kicked back um, nice. And you can see how smooth those layers flow together. That's what I love about this cut. You could definitely leave the top longer if you want to. Uh, there's a lot of different options with it. So now what I'm going to do is show you guys another option. Uh, we're going to load this video up because it's been a bit since I posted a video and I want to get back on track. So lots and lots of techniques. I'm using a one inch. Actually, this is an inch and a half curling iron. Uh, still using that thermal protectant spray, going through, taking vertical sections. And what I'm going to do is iron uh, through this, wrapping everything away from the face on the left-hand side. And then by the time I get to the other way, I want to wrap everything in the same direction. I want to give it kind of a nice flow to it. But I also left out the ends um, to give them more of an organic feel as well. I don't want this to be so put together in the end result. So it'll have a nice kind of even flow to the wave, but the ends will be a little more tossed, a little more organic and natural. You see I break up the back because it gets a little bit uh, longer, wider section, so I break up the top. I put the ends in when I work occipital bone up to low crown. I put the, all the ends in the curling iron, but then when I work at the nape area, that part I don't put the ends in because that's obviously what you're going to see at the bottom. Also, key thing with uh, curling hair, I'm setting it with the thermal spray from Joyco, but um, my big thing is as well that I'm not touching those curls once I let them go out of the, I, I might stretch the, the very bottom a little bit, but I let it set, let it cool, because if I start stretching it as soon as I take it out, I'll, I'm going to lose that curl. So a lot of you guys are scared to brush through, run your hands through curls at the very end. You don't have to be scared as long as you let it set and you get a nice uh, bit of product in there. If you don't use enough product and you don't let the curl set, you're not going to get the result that you want. So finishing it up, you can see I'm still curling in the same direction. And now we're going to work through the top. The key thing with the top is I want her to be able to wear this back and have volume. So I don't want to separate everything just in half uh, because that would give me um, kind of a less volume in the very center of the technique. So what I'm going to do is just curl everything back on the top, but I'm going to split it into three sections as soon as I finish this crown area. So the crown area I broke into two, curl everything back. You can see there little bit off base, but for the most part, we're just going straight down to the head. And then now you're going to see in these last couple sections, I want to build volume. Volume is the key to this style. I want to kick up the front. So I take that horizontal section across and then I split it and I allow myself to have a center section and then two sections around each parietal ridge. So here's my first parietal ridge on the left side and I curl that back keeping everything still straight straight up and then straight down to the scalp. Then I'm going to have a center section there. 
Same curling straight down to the scalp. And then one more, which is at the parietal ridge on the opposite side. Still curling everything back. You could curl everything forward if you wanted even extra volume. The reason I didn't do that in this is because the, the top is a little bit shorter. So because the top is shorter, I feel like it would give me more of a dated effect and a, more of a flip uh, if I curl everything forward. So I just curled everything back. And in the front, I didn't allow it to set as long because I didn't want so much curl in the very front. So I just left it on for just a second just to give it that bend. Um, but that's going to rest on everything else that I curled before. There's our last little bit. Now we're going to use our finishing spray from Joyco. And I'm going to brush through the hair. This is with a, just a polishing brush. It's got a lot of bristles on it. Um, you can find these at any of the uh, supply stores. But just brushing through. And you can see how it holds that wave and starts to bring the waves together. I wanted it to still have kind of a messier effect on the ends. But I wanted uh, you to see the layering come to life throughout the rest of it. So I'm working with my hands, brushing through. You can see that nice wave, really love that look. And then now what I'm gonna do is take one side and brush it back and then kind of have it come more towards the face a little bit on the right hand side, the heavier side. And this is just having fun with it, guys. You can do whatever style you want. This haircut is very versatile. That's what I wanted to show you guys. I did curl the ends a little bit just to polish them at the end. Wanted to show you guys that, not hide it. Uh, because with the ends being a little bit straight, didn't quite go with the style as much as I wanted to. So I just gave it a little bit of a bend. But you can see nice flow with the layers. Hope you guys like this technique. Let me know in the comments below. I'm so excited to be back doing videos with you guys. Let me know what you want to see next. Thanks. All right, guys, like always, if you like this haircut, then hit the like button, hit the share button, subscribe down below if you haven't done so already, and make sure you share this with all of your hairdresser friends out there. Also, make sure you check out our FSE Partner Salon program. That program is $19.99 per month. I know it's not free, but it's online live classes with me and other people from our free salon education team. So get signed up. You also get put on our hair salon locator, which is a brand new website. If any of you out there are looking for a new hair salon to go to, go to hairsalonlocator.com. It's full of all of our FSE partner salons. We have over a hundred salons in the country now. People that are partnering up with us, taking the classes, learning the live technique, and then sharing that with you guys and doing your hair beautifully. So if you guys are interested, check that out as well. Thank you guys so much for watching these videos and supporting free salon education. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.